Good evening, YouTube. It's Jeff Hale here uh, with another video hoping to help uh, make you a more comprehensive outdoors person. Um, so welcome hunters, fishermen, fisherwomen. And today we're going to be talking about braid and mono and salmon fishing. Um, and we're actually going to be talking about trolling with a downrigger and jigging with a jig rod. And check out my other video about jigging for salmon because this applies. So lots of fishermen nowadays, um, both jig fishermen and <clears throat> downrigger fishermen are switching from using monofilament for their main line to braid for their main line. And braided line has a lot of benefits. One of the benefits is it's super thin diameter for its strength ratio. So you can have, it's only the diameter maybe of say eight pound mono, but it's got the breaking strength of 40 pound mono. The other thing is braid does not stretch and it's super abrasion, abrasion resistant and durable. And so this is helpful when you're <clears throat> fishing, let's say 160, 170, 180 feet deep, that braid doesn't have as much blowback. It doesn't have the, float, the flotation that monofilament does, and it cuts through the water very easily. The other thing is when you're fishing that deep, if it's all mono, there's a lot of stretch in that line. With braid, at that, at that length or that distance, if you set the hook, it's, it's got almost no stretch, and it's going to pull a hook much better into a fish's mouth. But there's some difficulties with braid. And if you're downrigger fishing especially, and you put all braid on your reel, and you try to clip it in the downrigger clip, it'll pop out. And that happens even with mono, and that's super frustrating, right? You, you get your flasher and your hoochie, your flasher and your spoon, and you let it behind the boat, and you clip the mono in your clip, and then you start to let it down, and boom, it pops out. And then you gotta reel it up and take the downrigger bucket, and then you gotta reclip it. It can be super annoying. And that will really happen a lot with braid because it's such a small diameter. So the best way to get around that is to put on what's called a top shot. And a top shot is fisherman lingo or fisher person lingo for putting a length of monofilament on top of your braid. And I recommend putting anywhere from 15 to 30 feet depending on what you're doing. I like to go with 30 feet. And this is why. With 30 feet, I still have plenty of mono to put back my flasher and say a spoon behind the boat and still be able to put my clip on the mono and my my mono is much less likely to pull out um, of the clip versus if I did that to braid. The other reason I like that length is because I know there's no stretch in the braid and I actually want a little bit of stretch in the mono. So when a fish is shaking its head after he's been hooked, there's a little bit of give. There's a little bit of give. So. Um, and finally, I just like the fact that monofilament, to me, feels more like a leader and it feels like it's less visible in the water. I don't even know if that's true, though, because there's some braid that's dark colored that pretty, it's pretty invisible. It disappears pretty well, but that's just me. So how do you put a top shot on your braid? Let's talk about that. So let's pretend this is the salmon reel that I'm going to be using um, and that this is the braid I'm going to be using. And it's actually not the braid I would use, but it's yellow and you can see it. So that's why I picked it. Now... I have this monofilament. I want to use this rod and reel for downrigger fishing, but I need to put some monofilament on. I'm going to put a top shot on. Well, problem. Braid is funky when you try to tie it. And there's a couple of good knots and a couple of bad knots, especially when you're trying to do dissimilar diameters and you're attaching mono to braid. But one very easy knot to tie is called the double uni knot. And I'd like to show you that now. So I have my braid coming off my reel. I have my mono. I'm just using 20 pound mono as, a, as an example. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross the two pieces of line like this. And I'm gonna do this nice and slow so you can see. So all I'm doing is holding about a six inch section parallel to each other. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna focus on this piece of mono right here. And watch what I do. I'm gonna put a loop in that mono. Now here's the braid coming off my reel. I have a loop in my mono and I'm going to pass this mono through the loop and around the braid four or five times. So here we go. Here's one, two, three, four. I'm only going to go four times with the mono because the mono is a pretty large diameter. Now you notice there's a little tag end right here. I'm going to grab the tag end I'm going to grab the braid and I'm going to grab this part. 
going to lick this knot and I'm going to cinch it down and watch what happens. It forms a figure eight and it clamps down onto the braid. So I just did that with the mono onto the braid. Now I'm gonna go down here and look, and oh, look it, I have this short piece of braid. I'm gonna do the same thing with the braid onto this section of the mono. So I throw a loop in this. Okay, so I have a loop now that's right alongside the monofilament. And I'm going to take this piece of braid, and because it's thinner diameter than the mono, I'm going to do more than four. I'm going to do like six. Six wraps. One around both the loop of the braid and the mono. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And the reason I did is because I want to, because the, the braid is thinner diameter, I want to build up a little bit more bulk there so that when these two knots come up against each other, they lock. So I've heard some people refer to this as the jam knot because you're going to jam these two things together. So watch what happens when I draw these two knots together. You're going to cinch down your mono. You're gonna cinch down your braid, you're gonna pull all four tag ends together, and then pull the two pieces, and those things are now rock solid. That is a very good knot to use to attach monofilament to braid, whether they're similar diameter or dissimilar diameter. Then I'm gonna take my scissors, and I'm gonna clip it off so there's you know, no tag ends to pick up seaweed or other debris in the water, as close as I can. And there you go. Now, you can fish it just like this, or you can do one more step. One thing I like to do is, I like to get what's called Loon Outdoors No Knot Sense. And basically what it is, it's a UV resin glue. And fly fishermen use it, and they use it to make heads on flies, um, you can also get Solarex. Uh, you can get any kind of UV light activated glue. Um, it comes in a little dropper. I put a little drop on here and I roll it back and forth so it's evenly distributed and it becomes like a smooth teardrop. Then I hit it with a UV light and this thing gets really slick. It moves through the guides beautifully and it totally soaks into that knot and seals it up. Although I fish it just like this lots and it's fine. I just prefer to have that extra insurance and I like the fact that it's, it becomes really slick and smooth and it goes through my eyes really, the eyes of my rod really nice. So give that a try. That's called the double uni knot. It's one of, uh, it's an excellent way to um, attach mono to braid. And this is gonna work great for both jigging vertically deep and for using mono on your downrigger rod. Um, I give it a try. So if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. Have a great evening.